So now we are going to look at branching instructions. Uh, for what purpose are we using branching instructions? See, we need, uh, if some of you might have studied C language, we need loopings, we need loops, okay? So, so that we do not have to write big programs, too short our programs, if a single thing has to be done a lot of times, we are using loops. So for the purpose of uh, making loops, we are using these branching instructions. What they are going to do is, they are like jump, jump instructions. What they are going to do, that uh, if you are at a particular address and you want to uh, jump to another address, which is not immediate next address, then we are using these instructions, jump instructions. So we are having two types of uh, jump instruction, two type of branching instru instructions. First is unconditional jump. unconditional jump so the instruction is the instruction that we're using is jmp and we're giving a 16 bit address whatever address you want to jump to you're giving the address jmp 3070 suppose so this is the instruction it is a 3 byte long instruction, 1 byte you are storing the opcode, then 2 bytes are required for storing the address. So this is a 3 byte long instruction, size of the instruction is 3 byte. Then it is having 3 machine cycles, 3 machine cycles, machine cycles. First machine cycle is going to be opcode fetch, opcode fetch of 40 states. Then we are having two memory read cycles for reading the address. Memory read, memory read. So this is a, the total length of this instruction is going to be 10 T states. Opcode fetch is going to take 4 T states. Memory read, memory read, 3 T states each. So this jump instruction, what it is going to do is, let us look at it with an example. Example. Suppose we are having a program starting from memory location. Uh, let us suppose 2001. We are having a program starting from this memory location. First instruction was XRAA. Then we have, this is a one byte instruction. So next instruction is going to be saved at immediate next memory location. Next instruction was INRA. Then we had again INRA. Next memory location had an instruction JMP2006, suppose J, uh, JMP, okay, not 2006, let us say 2009. Now, this is a 3 byte long instruction. So, next instruction is going to be, next instruction is going to be saved at memory location 2007. Suppose this had the instruction DCRA, then we had then we had some instruction say complement a something like that and at 2009 you had inra and then you had finally you had halt halt means end of the program so what happens actually in this program is xrr a means a is exhort with its own content so contents of a is going to be 00 after execution of this instruction, A is going to be, value of A is going to increment, so A is going to be 0, 1. Again, we are incrementing A, so A is going to be 1, 0, which is 2. Now, what happens when we reach this instruction, when we reach this jump instruction, 2007 and 2008 are not going to be executed, not executed. Simply, PC program counter is going to be overwritten with this value. Actually, what had to happen after execution of this instruction 2004, we had to go to next memory location, which was 2007. But because of this instruction, because this instruction JMP2009 came, PC value will get overwritten with 2009 and will directly jump to in the memory location 2009, which has INRA. So A will get incremented and become 11. So final value of A is going to be 11 after execution of this program. These two instructions are not executed. If they would have been executed, suppose this, this instruction had been executed, after this value of A should have been 01 and after CMA, CMA means complement accumulator. If complement accumulator would have been executed, the contents of accumulator would have been FE. 
complement of 0 1 is Fe. But this did not happen because these two instructions were not executed since we had a unconditional jump. Unconditional jump means whenever this JMP 2009 JMP some 16 meter adder is going to come, no instruction in between is going to be executed. You are uh, going to jump finally to the value given by this address. So this is what is happening in unconditional jump. It is a 3 byte long instruction. Size of this instruction is 3 byte and is having 3 machine cycles, opcode fetch and 2 memory read. Then we are having, next we are having conditional jump, conditional jump. See we know that the 8085 microprocessor is having five, 5 flags, right? We have already studied about the 5 flags. So based on the, those flags only we are having conditional jumps. What happens in conditional jump? So we had sign flag, zero flag, auxiliary carry flag, parity flag and carry flag. So uh, we are not having any jump instruction for this auxiliary carry flag, we are not having any jump instruction for this, but we are having jump instruction based on sign, zero, parity and carry. We are having jump instruction based on this. So we are having, uh, suppose for sign flag, we are having two instructions jump on plus and jump on minus so uh, let us look at jump on plus first suppose i give an instruction jump on plus 2050 so what happens is what happens is we are going to check for the sign flag we are going to check the sign flag if this sign flag If this sign flag is 1, if this sign flag is 1, 1 which means it is negative number, we are not going to jump, not going to, no jump, okay, simply next instruction is going to be executed. But if the sign flag is 0, sign flag is 0 means the result is positive, then we are going to jump, jump to 2050, we are going to jump to this location. Right, so this is how conditional jump is going to work. Okay, this is the based on sign flag. We are having two two conditional jump instruction, which is jump on plus. This is this stands for jump on plus, and one more instruction we are having J M, which is which is jump on minus, jump on minus. Okay, similarly, same, similar to this instruction, if the sign flag is 0, if the sign flag is 0, we are not going to jump, but if the sign flag is 1, that is if the result is negative number, if there is a minus sign present, we are going to jump to this memory location. Based on 0, we are having two instructions, two instructions, jump on 0 and jump on 0, 16 bit address is going to be present here. And second is jump on not 0, jump on not 0. So this jump on not 0, we are using this widely. We are using this a lot in the programming, jump on not 0. So here what we are going to do is we are just going to check the 0 flag. We are going to check the status of 0 flag. If the 0 flag is not 1, that is if the result is not 0, we are going to make the jump. Right, so these are the two instructions based on zero flag. Based on parity flag, we are having two instructions. Jump on parity even. And jump on parity odd. Jump on parity odd. Okay, if parity is even, then you make a jump here. And if the parity is odd, you're going to jump here to the required address. And based on carry flag also, jump on carry, jump on non-carry. So here you are going to jump when carry flag is 1 and here we are going to jump when carry flag is 0. Okay, uh, we can just write the status of flags according to which here carry flag should be 1 for jump to happen, here carry flag should be 0. Here parity flag is going to be 1, here parity is going to be 0, here 0 flag should be 1, 0 and this is plus minus so this is uh, S should be 0 and here S should be 1. So this is how conditional jump is working. 
so conditional jump is also going to be a three byte long instruction in one byte we are going to store the opcode and in the next two bytes we are going to store the address so this is also a three byte long instruction three byte long instruction we are also going to look at its machine cycles so already we have seen that unconditional jump had 10 t state it had three machine cycles conditional jump is not the same why is it not the same because here we need to check the condition we need to check the flags why if the jump has to be made or not and checking the condition requires two t states it is a two t states long process so what happens is uh, if we talk about the machine cycles what happens is you're going to make opcode fetch this has to happen this is this is confirmed opcode fetch this is going to take four t states next what happens is we are going to make memory read after opcode fetch only you are going to know that this is a conditional jump after this only you can check the condition so what uh, what does the microprocessor do to save time in order to save time we do not stop and check the condition we are going to make memory read for the lower bits of the address first meanwhile meanwhile condition is checked meanwhile condition is checked checking the condition required two t states two t states so when one memory read cycle is going on condition is being checked now suppose condition is true condition is true suppose you had to make a jump if parity was even and you found that condition is true that is parity was even so if condition is true you're going to have one more memory read cycle of 3t states and this is going to be similar to unconditional jump and will take up a total of 10t states total of 10t states suppose condition was false if condition was false we're going to stop it here itself so this is going to take 70 state this is going to take 70 state so if condition is false then conditional jump is going to be a 70 states long instruction if the condition is true it's going to take 10 t states checking condition requires 2 t states to avoid wastage of time in case of true condition see if condition is false this is going to take 6 t states only but if the condition was true this would have taken 12 t states so best case is to check condition while you uh, when you are doing first memory read cycle one more thing that you can note here is Suppose there is an instruction like this JMP2060. So how is it stored in the memory? We, you can just have a look. Suppose this, this instruction started from memory location 3000. So at memory location 3000, you are going to store the opcode JMP. This is going to be stored at memory location 3000. Now, one thing, uh, since this is a three byte long instruction, it's going to take three memory locations, 3000, 3001 and 3002. One thing that you can note here is, this is one byte of instruction, next two bytes are the address. One thing that you can always remember is, higher bits of the address are stored in higher memory location lower bits of the address are stored in lower memory location that is when we are storing this instruction you are going to store 60 first and next you are going to store 20 here you are going to have 60 and here we are going to have 20 lower bits of the address are stored in lower memory location 301 is lower than 3002 so lower bits of the address we are going to store in lower memory location higher bits of the address in higher memory location so this memory read cycle will be for 60 first we are reading the mem uh, memory address lower bits 60 and if condition is true you are going to read 20 you just you can just remember this thing this can help you uh, sometimes when you study stack you'll understand this the importance of this thing uh, for now you can just note this memory uh, machine cycles of conditional jump are going to be 70 if the condition is false and 10t if the condition is true. Uh, now we are going to look at some uh, looping and timing delay modules.